Welcome back to Let the Quran Speak. Now, a little while ago, the French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, made, made some comments about the hijab, in his, about the burqa in his uh, policy speech. He claimed that the, the burqa was a symbol of subjugation that wasn't welcome in France. Uh, we'll be exploring that further with Brother Shabir. Brother Shabir, uh, what are your thoughts on, on what Sarkozy has said? The, the burqa in Islam was not meant to be a um, a well, symbol first, of maybe subjection. we should we should ask we should discuss what the burqa is so that people are familiar with it. Yeah, a number of terms get thrown around, and, and the terms may sometimes be used interchangeably. But mm -hmm. we should be very specific about what means what. Um, first, there is a niqab or a face covering that could be attached to a larger garment, or it might be a separate piece of uh, of wear cloth, yes. of cloth. Um, then there is what people normally refer to as the hijab nowadays. By that, usually they, they mean the khimar, which is a head covering. So if we think of a woman wearing something like a maxi skirt or, or pants and, and a full covering blouse, uh, in addition to that, uh, a Muslim woman may want to cover her hair with uh, a, a, a head covering, and that is called khimar in Arabic. But most commonly, that comes to be referred to in, in the popular parlance as hijab. So a woman donning the hijab is thought to be precisely dressed in this way. Mm -hmm. And then there is the burqa, which is uh, a, a larger cloth, which uh, is known from some parts of the world, such as uh, in Afghanistan. It's all, is it an Arabic word? Um, I am not sure that this is an Arabic word. Okay. Uh, it seems to come from other languages. Uh, and the, the Arabic equivalent of this will be jilbab, which will be a large outer garment, uh, or, or thawb, which nowadays just simply means the, the, the large garment that a man wears. But technically that could refer to just simply a large garment, whether worn by, by men or women. But the burqa and seems to cover the face as well. When people say the burqa, they refer to... A covering that this is why I said that the face covering could actually be a separate cloth by itself mm -hmm. or it could be actually attached to the larger garment that one wears. Okay. Uh, it, typically in, in some uh, Muslim uh, cultures a woman would have a house dress that makes it comfortable for her to dwell at home and interact with uh, her relatives and, and family. But when she goes outside and uh, outside of the house to interact with strangers, she would don a larger garment which covers her entire body. Uh, and uh, some of these garments would uh, include also the niqab, the face covering, which covers the face or the, the woman might, in addition to that larger garment, wear a separate piece of cloth to cover the face. Uh, what precisely is required by the uh, religious teachings of, of Islam? Uh, this needs some discussion, but it seems that uh, the French president's comments uh, leaves the, uh, leave this kind of vagueness about it in that it's not clear what he's referring to, mm -hmm. uh, though there are strong indications that he's referring to a kind of a complete cover, including the face covering. So he says that the, the burqa is a symbol of subjugation. Would you agree with that statement? Um, it, I can see why he might have made such a statement because in, in the history of religions this has the, the uh, extensive covering of women has, uh, have been um, the extensive covering has been described as uh, a sign of authority uh, on, on the woman uh, we, we read in the Bible for example in first Corinthians chapter 11 where Paul writes that the head of every man is uh, is, is Christ and the head of every woman is her husband mm -hmm. and the man shouldn't uh, uh, put anything on his head because he is the image and glory of God. But the woman should bear a, a sign of authority on her head because she is the image of the man. Um, but he seems to be referring to the burqa specifically because he's saying, you know, they're, sim they're prisoners of, uh, of social life. They can't participate in social life. You know, they don't have an, a, a, an identity within society. Well, we should clarify that uh, the, the Islamic requirement for uh, both men and women to dress in a decent way was uh, never meant to be a sign of subjection of either men or women, uh, or one to the other. And uh, it was uh, for the promotion of decency in society, just for the same reason that uh, people do not wear their beach clothes to the office, because they, they realize that uh, the office has a certain setting, a certain expectation, and one dresses according to that expectation. Well, in a Muslim society, that expectation 
uh, carries its uh, its way through all activities, uh, such that whenever there's a difference between public space and private space, in your private space in your bedroom, uh, you can be naked, but uh, in in when you're going to be seen by others, uh, you should dress in a decent way, whether you're in the office or on the beach. And uh, the level of decency that is being spoken about here is reflected in the Islamic culture in a, in a different way. Uh, in that uh, generally the women are expected to have a head covering, uh, again not as a sign of subjection, but uh, as a symbol of modesty. So how do they maintain their identity then, or establish it? Well, the clothing that we describe, where a woman wears uh, a, a long skirt and uh, a a flowing blouse and uh, puts on also uh, a head covering revealing the face uh, would actually allow for a full expression of her personality. All right, thank you for that, Brother Shabir. You're welcome. When we, when we come back, special guest Hamza Moin will be with us.